episode 8 of the 1970 Impala build with me and Pointy. This is going to be an indoor episode, cars outside as you can see it's dark. I'm going to try and get the switch panel pre-wired tonight. Come the weekend I can fit the panel, run the cable into the back of the car and wire everything up and then test the switch. For the Impala Zach has opted for a six hole panel. This has come from Limit Fabrication. Six switches, uh, we're gonna run five double pole and a single quad. We'll go into the reasoning for this in a minute. And then we've got some switch extensions. We're also gonna need some switch wire, some lengths of wire for making up links. And then tools wise, we need a little screwdriver for the terminals on the switches. I tend to just use a flat. We need a pair of snips, cutting wire with, handheld crimp tool, a set of wire strippers. And we're also gonna need some terminals. And the terminals we're gonna be using 3.75 and that is deciphered by the hole in the switch so you want the right size hole for your screw and of course the right size crimp for the wire that you're going to be using I'm just going to be using some of this black switch wire so I always like to start by getting a switch wire this is 7 core Essentially you need, oh no, sorry, this is nine core, but we're only going to use seven of the cores. You need enough cores for the dumps and the solenoids that you're going to be running. So in this instance, it's two pumps, there's going to be two banks of solenoids, and there's going to be four dumps. So you need six wires to power your dumps and your solenoids, and then of course you need your one 12 volt main. That's so when you power the solenoid, you've got one wire for that one bank of solenoids and you've got one wire for the dump on that pump. So this wire that's come from Hoppo's is, let's see if it'll focus in on that, is nine core, but we don't need to use all those nine. And we're only gonna be using seven. So I'm gonna strip this back a little bit with the blade. Mind your fingers. This is just so I can see what color wires I've got in the group. You can buy trailer wire, which is seven core, relatively inexpensive. So I've stripped that back. We've got uh, a gray and black and a gray, a green and a green and black, white and a white and black, purple, purple and black and a blue. So the single blue, so what I like to do is make a list of the colors that you've got. So we've got a blue, purple, purple, and black. We've got a gray, we've got a gray, black, white, and white, and black. We will not be using the two green wires. You can ignore those for now, we'll just take them out of the way when it comes to wiring. So we've got blue, purple, purple and black, gray, gray and black, white, white and black. So now we need to pick what each one's gonna do. So the blue I'm gonna use as my uh, 24 volt positive. So that'll go to a 24 volt battery terminal. Purple will be uh, front soles. Purple and black will be the rear Soles. These are going to be my four dumps. So grey will be front left dump, grey and black front right dump, white is going to be the rear left dump, and white and black will be the rear right dump. And the next thing we're going to do is number each one. And I'll show you why in a minute. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's your colours. That's what each coloured wire is going to power. 
and then you've got a number for each one. Now, I use the numbers because I wire to a terminal block. So this is a seven terminal block. So one will be 24, 24 volt live, two will be your purple and so on. Okay, so that's important, but we do that in the car. So we wanna just strip this back a little bit further. Being careful not to press too hard on the sleeve. What you don't wanna do is score any of the strands. So there's your strands. Okay, so you're not gonna be using this green and this green, so we can get that out of the way and tape it out. Let's just get some electrical um, electrical tape of some description and just get them out of the way. I'm not gonna be using those greens, but as we might do in future, it makes sense to leave them in. If you decide to go with two extra pumps at a later date, you know your wires are there for you to run the extras. So they're just tucked away underneath that sleeve. So there's your seven strands that you're gonna to wire to. Well, let's just leave that for a minute. Get that out of the way. And what I like to do is assemble the switch panel exactly how you intend to. So spanner, 14, 15 metric tends to do the business. The plan is to run front switch nearest the door and the back switch. And this is gonna be all up and all down. This is gonna be left side and right side, and this is gonna control your four dumps. So what you need to do is, you need to get your switches and build up your panel. It doesn't have to be bang on initially. I don't have to get all these nice and aligned. It's just a case of getting the switches into the panel in the order that you wish to place them. Okay, so there's your six switches in. I've made it so the notch is at the bottom. So when the switch panel's in, you don't see that notch. And then the order I've done it, so that's the front. That's the rear, that's the whole car. That's why it's the Y bump, because it's got a power four dumps. That's gonna be the two sides, and these are gonna be your dumps. I could have done these with single pole switches, but I haven't got any, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, so now it's just a case of working out how you're gonna wire it. The middle is the common, so you need to wire to every single one of these terminals where there's gonna be power on the switch. So this is going to be powering uh, a bank of solenoids and two dumps, a bank of solenoids, two dumps, both banks of solenoids, all four dumps, dumps, two dumps, two dumps, one dump, one dump, one dump, one dump. So you know how many of these terminals need power to them. In this instance, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I need to make twelve links to connect all of the 12 volts together. Of course, I mean 24 volt. These are 12 volt switches, but we wire them 24 volt because of the voltage drop. When you're hitting switches so fast, sometimes you can end up with uh, electrical issues with your solenoids. So you need to get your uh, length of switch wire, strip the wire back just a touch, and then crimp one end of your wire. What you want is, I don't know if you can see it, the copper just showing through the top of the terminal. And then with the crimp tool, blast the crimp. So that's one end. And then I'm gonna be wiring from this end of the switches, it doesn't matter where you wire from, as long as they're all linked in the right order. So I'm gonna wire the first termination to there. So the 24 volt, if you remember, this blue wire will be going to this first terminal. And then as these are all commons, these are gonna be linked. So I need to make all these little link wires to connect all of these terminals. 
together. So I'll just film the first few. So it's only just a case of making a, a loop to go from one terminal to the next. So if you just cut, strip, get terminal, make sure your copper's showing. Give it a good pull to make sure it's got a decent connection. And then, with the screwdriver, take one screw out, put your screw through the eye of the terminal, and screw it in. It might be worth just leaving this one loose, because if you remember, this is where the the switch cable is going to connect to and then that one needs to go to here this is where it can get a little bit tricky what you can do is get a pair of needle nose pliers and just tweak these terminations if I can do it might be a bit easier take that screw out first because it's difficult to get the angle to put the, the screws in. You can just tweak that. If you can see, I've put a bit of an angle on it. It just means that you can get your screw in at the angle. Now it's pointless putting that one on yet because you need to make another link. So I'm gonna leave that one loose. I'm gonna crimp another wire like so. And then these two will connect together, creating the loop through one, through the other, and into your terminal and your switch. Can get a little bit fiddly. So this one you can tighten up because once this one's in you don't need to do it again and then this wire will then link to this switch so you need to get your loop about the same length so around there trim your wire strip it terminate it Bit. Then this will go to terminal on the next switch, like that. And then that just continues. You'll link that one to that one, and that one to that one, 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 that one, that all the way down. I've cracked on, and you can see all the 24 volt commons are now linked. So this is where that blue 24 volt live remember we wrote it on the board is going to go into this first 24 volt common then that's linked to the other side of the switch then that's linked to this switch to the other side of that switch and then that's linked to this first terminal on this four bank switch now i've used a different type of crimp on those which is it's the same size essentially but it's got a, a wider uh, crimp hole so you can run two wires into one. I did that on them because not only is there less space on this switch to get in with screwdrivers, etc., but because it's got these little jaws, I don't know if you can make it out to hold the terminals in, which doesn't really suit two wires on each, whereas these don't. So that's linked to that, linked to that, linked to that, linked to that. That's linked to the other side of that switch. And then on these two switches, if you remember, we're only using one side. So we could have used single pole switches, but I haven't got any. So we're using double. We're just using one side of the switch. Now it gets a bit more complicated. These aren't tight to start with. I'll go back down these later and nip everything up and make sure everything's tight. A lot of mistakes that I see people make is they wire 
the, the front, so the lift, to the top part of the switch because they think that must be where that makes contact. But that isn't the case. When you lift the switch up, so when you hit the switch up, you're making these two contacts here. So this is where your solenoids are going to mount to. They're going to have to link to this switch as well, so it could get quite complicated. So the purple for the front solenoids, so this is going to be the front switch. So the purple wire will go to this first terminal. And then the purple and black, which is the rear solenoids, is going to go to this switch. And then there'll be a link from this switch to here and this switch to any one of these here. So when you hit that switch up, these will make contact and it will make the front go up. When you hit that switch up, these will make contact and the rear will go up. And when you hit this big switch, all of these will make contact. So the front and the rear will go up at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these now. Again, it's just a case of stripping back. Terminal or whatever you wanna call it. Crimp that terminal and then we're gonna wire that to here. So this is where the purple wire was gonna go on, if you remember. So we're gonna stick that on there. So the purple wire will go to this same terminal. So the purple wire coming in from the switch wire will come to that terminal. But I also want this switch to do the same. So I'm gonna run a link from that terminal. And loop it all the way over one of these terminals. Any of those, it doesn't really matter which. I'll probably go for these outer two, I think. It wants to be around that long. Trim that, trim that, where the terminal on, crimp, pick your connection and then I'm going to wire it to there. So I need to take that screw out, stick it through terminal, screw that, oh, it is a fiddly job so it does take a little bit of patience. But after years of doing this, I always find it better to do it off the car than in the car. Because you end up stuck underneath dash panels and all sorts of stuff. So now we're in the position where that front switch and that switch are both doing the same thing because they're connected. So now we need to do the same with this, where the purple and black wire is going to go to. That also needs to link to this same switch here. So I'm going to strip that wire back. Slide. Terminal on, crimp it, and screw terminal on that switch. Everything's still a little bit loose. Like I say, I can tighten it all up later. I just want to make sure that I get all the lengths of the wire and everything right. I'm going to double check my wiring. I'm going to wire that across to this one out of the way. Just trim that. Strip that, terminate, crimp, take the screw out, drop it through the hole, give the screw back in. I've seen some people use split split terminals, like fork terminals, where they can just unscrew it a little bit, slide the fork behind, but I think I trust ring crimps, it's worth the struggle. There's your front switch, up will make that connection, so it'll make the front go up, but it'll also, if you hit that switch up, it'll make that connection, but now that will do the front and that will do the rear, this one will do the front and the rear, and you hit that switch up. So now it's the same with the dump, so that's all the solenoid wiring done, apart from the main wire from the switch wire that goes to that first switch, so it's the same here. You need, this is going to be a front switch, so you need your two front dumps, which on our list were grey and grey and black. And then on this switch you need your two rear dumps, which are white and white and black. And then you need to link across from that first switch to here, and second, that first switch, second terminal to there, second switch first to there, there to there. And then this will link to whatever you've got going on with these other terminals. So I'm going to quickly show you where I'm going to route one of the dumps. 
Now that's going to go to this first terminal. So this wire will be, the grey wire will connect to that same terminal here. And we want this then to connect to this first terminal on this switch. So this switch, which is going to raise and lower the whole car, is going to do the same thing as this, but it will also do the same thing as those front two. So I'm going to link all the way across from that first terminal there to that first terminal there. Now as I'm going to link from this across to more goings on here, I'm going to put a blue creep on this. So I need to snip that once I've got the desired length. I'm going to take a little bit more off that wire and then the same with this. Just take a little bit more off and then twist those two wires together. Put a blue terminal on this one. You see how the copper core is just showing through the two wires and use the blue option on your crank tool. And that is going to go to that first terminal, like so. Back through there. Again, a bit fiddly. Trying to get the screw to start. There we go. So now, when you hit the dump on the first switch, down, and you hit the dump on this switch, these two switches are now doing the same thing. I also want some more of that action to come from some of these switches now this fourth switch we want it to dump the two sides so that will dump the left side and that will dump the right side so this is where it gets a little bit complicated so that first wire we said would be the front left dump so if we want this switch to dump on the up this now needs to come down to that side so when you hit that switch, sorry, when you hit that switch down, this wire is going to make connection and it's going to make the front left dump go down currently. If you hit that switch, it's going to make the front left go down. But then we want this switch up to make the whole left hand side go down. So we need it to connect on this side of that switch. So it needs to cross over and go to here. So again, snip, strip, slide a terminal on, and then you're going all the way to this one. But again, you want another link to come out of there. So another loop, that's your terminal on there. And you want that and that together. It's going in there. And then finally, so that, that is going to dump the front left. But we also want this one to dump the front left because this is going to be the four individual dump controls. Front left, front right, rear left, rear left, rear right. So they're going to be like your three wheel switches when you dump one rear corner. And that's just so you can control the front dumps too if you need to level the car out. So if that's going to be the front left dump that needs to go to this terminal so again the same process applies snip strip and crimp that one is going to go to there okay so it's starting to look a little bit complicated but trust me, it'll work, or it better work. So going back to the first switch, when you hit the switch down, sorry, it's gonna energize this connection. This is gonna be the wire that goes to the front left dump, which will be the gray wire that'll come into, link to this terminal. So when you hit that one down, the front left dump will actuate. If you hit that one down, the front left dump will actuate. If you hit that one up, the front left dump will actuate and if you hit that one up the front left dump will actuate and that's that front left dump done the front right dump is going to go to this other terminal on the front switch that's going to link over to here so that switch is going to do the same 
then that's going to link over to here because we want that to do the opposite we want that to do the other side of the car the front right and then that will also link to front right is going to be this switch i'm going to carry on wiring this and i'll go through it all with you in a minute update all the switch wiring is completed i hope it's correct we'll find out when we test it from the window side so you can lean in your window and hit the front switch up front switch down rear switch up rear switch down all up all down uh, left side right side down in both cases then front left down front right down rear left down rear right down so we've got quite a lot of options with regards to control the only thing to left to do now is to wire in the switch wire so to start i'm just gonna strip each one of these wires and put a crimp on it so everyone will be the same using our whiteboard wiring diagram plan thing we're going to connect them up to where they should be on the switches then the next job is to fit the switch panel into the car run the run this end of the cable underneath the carpet underneath the seat there's normally a wiring channel that'll go all the way through into the trunk that'll wire to here with the one two three four five marked up in accordance with the colored wire as we have on the whiteboard behind us and then we can wire from the one two three four five six seven terminals again using the the numbers on the whiteboard to wherever they need to go within the trunk so that's all seven wires terminated the same crimps and we just need to wire them to the first switch or wherever we decide to wire them to the blue was your 24 volt common which is the obvious one which links all of these wires together down the middle so in this case, I just need to take that terminal off and wire that to that. Nip that up. And the next wire was purple for the front solenoids. So the front switch was this first switch and the solenoid, if you remember, was the bottom terminal on the switch. So I need to unscrew that, which I've left. A little bit loose i've been through and checked all these and made sure they're all tight so that purple is going to link to that terminal again super fiddly I'll tighten that one up now the next wire was the purple and black which was the, the rear solenoid so it's this switch and it's that wire with the black line on it purple and black so again this one should be loose so that's the 24 volt live and the two solenoids wired up like so we're probably going to tuck that behind there you don't want it to come out the side like that because if it comes out the side you'll be able to see it i always like to sort of come out the middle and then this wire will run behind the dashboard so now it's the dumps so the front left dump was the gray so the front left that's the front switch and then the left we put it on the left hand side terminal so that should be the front left i'm just going to run through and check to make sure it's doing what i think it should do so up was the left and then that should link to this is the front left so if that's left that's there and that's there yeah so it's this one on the top and on the left hand side is the front left which is the great wire so i'm not sure that's the gray one not the gray and black yes so if we get the gray wire out through there through there into there lovely and then the front right dump was the gray and black so that goes to this the same switch but the terminal next to it so the other dump terminal on the front switch 
Great and Quirk, was it? Great and Quirk. If we go and link with that wire, which of course then links through to the other associated switches that we want to be able to control certain elements. Get that nice and tight. And then we've only got two left. So rear left dump was just white. I had to double check that then. So that must go to there. Let me just double check. It goes to there. It goes to there, which is the left side. And then we think that the rear left dump is down. So it must be this terminal, this terminal, this terminal, this terminal. So that's the rear left. Put that screw through there. My hands are freezing. And finally, there's only one left to terminate to, which is the rear right dump, which is the black and white wire. So again, just to double check, that wire goes to here, it goes to here, and that goes to here, which we said will be the rear right. So in theory, this is all correct. We'll obviously find out if it's actually correct when it comes to testing the car in one of the next few videos. Okay, so that's all your switch wire connected up. All of these will need to come off, and pop out the back, so you can connect this to the dashboard. I'll show that in the second part of this video and then screw that into the dash. There's normally at least one hole that this will line up with existing hole. You might have to drill a second one for the second screw to go in. But it's nice to get all these aligned. Make sure all your terminations are clearing, nothing's fouling. So you don't have to try and do this again when the switch panel is in the car because it can get really tricky and you will find that you don't have enough space to start bending terminals out of the way, etc. So they're all nice and tight. And one thing I have noticed that these are quite close here, but I've pushed them out of the way on these. So you can just either get a pair of pliers or use your fingers and just just bend those terminals out, out of the way so they're not too close to the panel itself. Obviously, you want to make sure that not only that, but none of these terminations are touching anything that they shouldn't be touching. Obviously, everything's relatively well shielded by the crimp, so nothing should be connected. You can also test it. You can get the other end of the cable and make sure that nothing's making a connection. And if you've got a, a megameter, megameter, a multimeter with uh, probes on it and a little sound and alarm bell, you can hit the switch and put the multimeter across your 12 volt, sorry, your 24 volt and the wire that you think it should be making a connection, the ones that it shouldn't be, and test all your switches to make sure it is actually wired up correct. I'm just going to put these lovely extensions on, take some photos for the video, and that's it. That's the, that's the uh, switches wired up. Tidy up these. Open up the cup for your wire. But there, there you have it. There is your switch panel. Pre-wired, ready to go into the car. This has been mounted into the dash. All the switches put in. And this cable will through underneath the seats, through whatever cable channel you, can, channel you can find in the car, into the back of the car. Then this will have some fork terminals, which I use on these. And then you can line these up one to seven, as per how we had it on the, the whiteboard. And then these other terminals will wire to your, well, number one will be your 24 volt and your front solenoid, rear solenoid. Front left dump, rear right dump, rear left dump, rear right dump. And then hopefully when you hit the switch, when you've got all the, the big cable in on, which is one of the next jobs, and you've got the disconnect together, everything will test up fine. So that concludes the basic switch wiring of a two pump, four dump, 
six switch panel. We will show you in the next video how to install the panel, run the wire underneath the seats, carpet, etc., into the back of the car, wire that to a terminal block in the trunk, and then wire from the terminal block to the pumps and batteries. And we'll also show you how to do the battery wiring, and then it'll be that first lick of the switch. <laughs> Thank you.